Hi, my name is Gerald Simon. I am the founder of Music Motivation and the creator of the Cool Songs Club. And every week I come out with brand new video tutorials that I share here on my YouTube channel. If this is your first time, I'd love to have you subscribe at youtube.com slash Gerald Simon, but you can click on the link below, subscribe, and then click on the bell so you can be notified about every new video that comes out. But today I'm going to play Jingle Bells, and we're going to play it a few different ways. This is actually from my book, 100 Left Hand Patterns Every Piano Player Should Know. Play the same song 100 different ways. And I'm going to talk about this book and explain some things, but first, let me play for you Jingle Bells. And we're just going to play it from the book. There's a fake book section that has 100 songs in fake book format. I'm going to play what is written in the fake book, and it's just the right hand melody. And then I'm going to talk about how we can start to change it up. Watch this. Now, pretty simple, not too difficult at all. All I did was play the melody, and that is what is written right here in, in this book. It's just Jingle Bells, the melody. But above the melody with the right hand, we have the chords written out. And they're written out as letters where we have C, F, G. So I want you to think about playing from a fake book as different levels. We're going to start with the basic level. First, I tell students to have them play the melody with the right hand, and with the left hand, play the chord. Now the chord is the letter directly above the measure. If you see a letter and then you see a measure that doesn't have a letter, then you know to keep playing the letter or the chord from the previous measure. So I'm going to start the primary chords, since this is in the key of C, we have C major, F major, and G major. Let me quickly play C major, F major, and G major for you. C major is C, E, G. F major is F A C. G major is G B D. There is a G seventh chord that we can kind of play around with, but all it is, it's adding the seventh interval above, starting on G, so it's G B D F. Now, I'm pulling my other fingers back so you can see it. Generally, I don't play it like that, but to show you what the notes are in the chord. I'm playing it like that. Let me play. I'm going to start off just basic, gentle. We're going to have the left hand play the chord while the right hand plays the melody. Now, that's pretty basic, very, very simple. We're playing a chord with the left hand and we're playing the melody with the right hand. Think of that as level one for playing from a fake book. The next step up, I tell students to play the chord. And if you want, you can even take it a step lower to begin with. You can play an octave interval or a perfect fifth interval with the left hand. So whatever the letter is above the measure for the chord, if it says C, play either the octave interval, C to C, or play the perfect fifth interval, C to G. You can play either one, 
Let me play the first line for you so you can see how that looks. Now there I was playing my perfect fifth interval. Now I can play the octave interval as well. So we're adding just a little more each time we're changing it. We are playing around with it. We're faking the left hand. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the chord and the melody with the right hand. What I tell people to do is play the melody with the pinky, so you're playing the melody. The melody is played with the pinky. And then we're going to put the chord below the melody with the right hand, so the right hand is playing both the melody and the chord. So essentially, if you have a C major chord, we're going to add that to the right hand, but we're going to invert it. Now, we've, we've talked about inversions before on this channel, but an inversion is where you take a chord and you just kind of flip it. Almost like if you had a tree, the roots are down at the base. So a C major chord in root position would be C, E, G. Well, if the wind came and knocked over that tree, the tree would be uprooted and flipped over. Well, now the roots that were at the bottom are going to be at the top. So if I take this C, and I still play C, E, G, I'm going to flip it, I'm going to put the C up on top, so now it's going to be E, G, C with the right hand. It still is a C major chord, but that is first inversion. If I put the E on top, that becomes second inversion. Root position, C, E, G. First inversion, E, G, C. Second inversion, G, C, E. Root, first, second. Pretty simple. So I'm going to play this now where the right hand is playing the melody and the harmony. Let me play just the first two measures. With the left hand, I'm just going to play an octave interval. So whatever the chord above the measure is, if it's a C, I'm going to play C octave interval. If it says F, I'm going to play an F octave interval. If it says G, I'm going to play a G octave interval. My right hand is playing the melody with the pinky, but the chord, if it says C, I'm going to play a C major chord with my right hand below the melody. Watch this and try to play this. That's all I'm doing. I'm playing the melody and the harmony with the right hand. Now, think of that as the next step up. Again, we're just going to the next level. What I'm going to do now, in the book, I actually have 100 different left hand patterns. So they're categorized according to basic left hand patterns, on, starting on page 8, and they're all numbered 1 through 100. And then we go to jazz, blues, boogie woogie left hand patterns, and then we go into pop rock patterns, we go into classical and new age, contemporary new age patterns. So we have all these different patterns. I'm just going to randomly select one. Let's go to the basic left hand patterns. I'm going to just look at these for a second. Okay, right here, number seven is an Alberti bass. Okay, an Alberti bass was very popular, Mozart used it all the time, but an Alberti bass essentially you take the major triad, the major chord, and you break it apart. If I had C, E, G, I would play C, G, E, G. Breaking it apart, but then I could include also the D and the F. That's the C, D, E, F, G. That's my C major pentascale. Well, the left hand pattern there on that page, it's a basic pattern, it does this. We can go up or down. I show both examples. So, we're going to take this left hand pattern. If I have it on F, I would start on F and do it on F. If I do it on G, I would go up to G. I'm going to play this. The right hand, I'm going to play the chord 
and the melody as we did just a second ago, but now I'm going to change the left hand. See how I'm changing that? Now if you notice with the left hand when we went to F, it sounded a little odd when I played the B and I did that intentionally because the original pattern would include a B flat if we were playing it in the key of F major. But I wanted to keep it in the key of C so we went to the B natural. So it sounds a little odd if you do that but if you go the reverse and you just ignore and leave out the B, it sounds normal. And you can just play around with that. So it's a fun, simple little left hand pattern. I'm going to choose another one. We're just going to go to the blues and boogie woogie left hand pattern section. I'm going to play. All right, let's do this. On page number 11, this is pattern number 21. We are taking a C sixth chord and we're breaking it apart. C sixth chord, if I have my C major triad, C E G, and I add the A up on top. As a C sixth chord. Well, I'm going to break it apart, but what I'm going to do is we're going to instead also include the E flat. So it's as if we have a C minor sixth with a C sixth, but we're going to break them apart. This is a fun little left hand pattern. Try this. Let me just play the left hand. And then you can try it on F. Try it on G. Pretty simple, not too difficult. I'm going to try it with the right hand. I'm going to embellish the right hand melody a little bit. When you change styles, you want the style of whatever blues rock, pop, new age, left hand pattern you are doing to sound good with the right hand. So you don't change the left hand pattern. The left hand pattern remains the same. You modify the right hand, the rhythm, maybe you add some extra notes to make the right hand sound like it's a jazz style or it's a new age style. Watch this. You can play around with it. It's a lot of fun. There's so much you can do with it. So I'd love to have you try that. I'm just going to choose one more pattern just for fun. We'll go to a new age pattern. All right. So the new age contemporary style pattern, I'm going to choose pattern number. We'll make this pretty simple. Number 62. So this is on page 20. This is pattern number 62. The pattern is a one, five, eight, nine, 10 left hand pattern. So if I start on C, C would be one, and then it goes up according to the C major scale. One, and then D would be two, E would be three, F would be four, G would be five, A would be six, B would be seven, and then C would be eight. And then it continues on, D would be nine, and then I would go to 10, which would be E. So I'm gonna do one, five, eight, nine, ten. C, G, C, D, E. I'm going up. 
doesn't matter where I start, I can start on F, I can go to A, I can go to G. It's a pattern, 1, 5, 8, 9, 10. We can even go up 1, 5, 8, 9, 10, 12. I'm going to play that left hand pattern. Every time I see a C chord, I'm going to start on C and do 1, 5, 8, 9, 10. Every time I see the F chord, I'm going to start on F and play 1, 5, 8, 9, 10. When I see the G, I'm going to start on G and play 1, 5, 8, 9, 10 from G. My right hand, I'm going to kind of embellish it and just play around to make it sound more like a New Age style. Watch this. I'll play this and you can try to play along. It's just a few ideas to help get you going, help get you excited about arranging, but it's very simple. When you use a fake book, we're just going up incrementally in stages or phases, fundamental phases of fake book performance, how to start using a fake book. Hopefully this video has helped you out. I did not want it to be too difficult, just more of an introduction to help you understand how you can start playing around with all of these fun pieces. If you get a chance, you can look at this book. It's 100 left hand patterns every piano player should know. Play the same song 100 different ways and it includes the fun fake book. This is available on Amazon or my website musicmotivation.com, anywhere you want to find it. But check it out. It's a fun way to start taking any song and being able to play around with it. You can play it any style you want. And that is what is so enjoyable about music, especially when you use a fake book. You can fake it. It becomes your music. So have fun with this. Play around. See what you can do. And have a great time. Thanks for watching. See you. As a special thank you for watching this video, I would love to have you download a free PDF that I created. It is titled, 20 Ways to Motivate Teen Piano Students to Want to Play the Piano the Fun Way. It's a 130-page PDF book that I created, and I'd love to have you download this book. If you need ideas on how to motivate teen piano students, or if you are a teen and you're looking for some fun ways to be motivated, please download this resource. If you go to coolsongsclub.com slash free book. You can download the free PDF. It's a great resource and it even includes 30 free cool songs that I've composed from my cool song series at coolsongsclub.com. I'd love to have you check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. See you.